Hello and welcome back. It's still the newspaper review right here on High Impact Television. We've taken a look at some of the stories making the rounds on the front page of the Punch newspaper. And now we are being joined by Emeka Nwatu, a public affairs analyst who joins us via phone call from Lagos. Good morning, Emeka Nwatu, and welcome to the newspaper review. Hello, good morning. Nice having me. Good morning, Nigerians. Good, good morning, everyone. Yes, it's good to have you this Thank morning. You. Now, uh, oh, okay. let, let me take a look at uh, some of the stories making the rounds in the front page of the Punch newspaper. Of course, Mr. Emeka Nwatu, you're aware that the year 2022 is actually the year of politicking, considering uh, what's going to take place in the year 2023. That would be the change of button from uh, one administration to the other. And one of the topics that is in the front burner of discourse is about the zoning of the presidency that different political parties is currently contending with. What's your view on it? Okay, yeah, good morning. Uh, thank you, thank you once again. Uh, zoning, zoning is not a constitutional issue, you know, but by, by, by practice and uh, tradition of, of the Nigerian political uh, environment, it has come to stay in our polity, you know. So, uh, so far, a lot of persons have indicated interest or have shown demonstrated interest to, to run for the post of the, of the president of Nigeria. So, but uh, I, think, I think that we should also take cognizance of uh, quality leadership. Quality leadership first, and then in the principles of equity and fairness. You know, so I, I also believe that uh, that everybody needs to be on board. We cannot have, uh, we cannot go back to a particular regime whereby we enthrone mediocrity and uh, and uh, some kind of uh, incapacity because of the fact that we want to keep pushing ideologies of uh, tribe and religion. You know. So for me, I want to see, I want to see a 2023 that will bring about uh, a change, change, quality change for the, the democratic system in Nigeria. Okay, so, Mr. Mekanwatu, sorry, to, sorry to butt in here. And uh, I just, before we move away from this topic, now, when we talk about change and uh, the kind of ideologies and uh, leadership competences, beyond yes. these words that uh, seem to be somewhat ambiguous and uh, they, they don't seem to have some form of specificity. What exactly would you tell the common man on the streets to look out for before, you know, uh, looking at someone or anyone to vote for? We're not talking about political parties. We are, you're just talking about a leadership in, in, in the, we're just considering leadership in this sense. Okay, uh, you, uh, like you the, quali the qualities of the leader. The oh politics. yeah, yes. Yes. First of all, we need someone who believes so much in Nigeria, who is very passionate about Nigeria, and then who who is ready to uh, serve Nigeria regardless of his personal interests. Who is who is who is going to bring everybody to the table? You know, everybody who is going to unite Nigeria. As I speak to you, Nigeria is so uh, disgruntled. There is a whole lot of agitations and uh, and uh, uh, resentments. Okay. So we need someone who would unite Nigeria, who would give everybody a sense of belonging. All right. You know, and, and you know, so far, if you look at the history of, if you look at our political history, uh, leadership has always been by way of agitations and, uh, and uh, 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 contentions. Okay. So, th so far there are some regions in this country that feel they are not part of the country. So we need a leader that will bring them on, that will give them a sense of belonging. Okay. I will tell them, see, this government will accommodate you. This government would, would protect your interests and give them that guarantee and let them feel part of it. So that let it not look as if uh, the, the country is, is, is uh, divided in, in unity. We All don't right. want that. Okay. Yes. 
All right, let's move so away from that. Who understands the economy and security very well as well. All right, okay, thank you. Let's move away from that. Now, one story that's very, very captivating in front page of the Punch newspaper says, federal mm -hmm. government must justify fresh three trillion naira votes and others for fuel subsidy. That statement is coming from the Nigerian Senate. Do remember that the fuel subsidy uh, removal debate has been in the front burner for a while now, and uh, there's been some form of uh, uh, figures that has been put forth by the NNPC, which has to do with the fuel consumption in the country, both the daily and monthly consumption. And with regards to fuel subsidy that has been extended for eight months, it's like it's going to cost the nation three trillion naira to sustain that for the next eight months. The Senate is demanding some form of accountability and justification for that. What's your perspective? Okay, so I, 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 I saw it in the news, and then I know that uh, it is going to bring more hardship to Nigerians. You know, but I, on one breath, I have conversed uh, in one of your sister programs that we shouldn't even continue to maintain this regime. I mean, why, why, why do we continue to pay subsidies when we can as well just uh, 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 remove it and then check, check the price a little bit, you know? So, but, but I, that, that's on one side. Then, coming to what the National Assembly is saying, uh, they, they know they know that uh, if subsidy is not removed, the burden will be on Nigerians. Those are the issues. The burden will be on Nigerians. For instance, uh, the three, there is already a deficit in our budget. Okay. If they want to, if they want to borrow, if if they want to jack up subsidies in the next eighteen months, they would have to borrow. They would have to borrow, and if they and if they borrow, the burden would obviously be on Nigerians. So uh, I I want I want them to understand that currently there is uh, there is there is a regime on on ground, which uh, they, they say that Nigerians. Well, what you talk about? The re what you talk about the, the regime? Nigerians consume as much as yeah, you talk, you talk about liters per day, Mr. Watu. Oh, oh, Okay. Yeah, when you talk about the regime, are you referring to the fuel subsidy regime? The remove the fuel subsidy regime? No, I'm I'm, I'm just I'm just looking at it holistically. Okay. I'm looking at it I'm looking at it holistically. It, no. Uh, I I I know. I currently know that there is a, a probe as to how much is consumed every day and and what NMPC declares and then the the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority okay. has, has come to, uh, to the figures they've, they've been able to issue. Okay. You know, so I think that that should that that process should continue, because if if they allow them to keep giving us on the on the recovery figures figures that don't really match to what uh, as as it, as it should be in terms of our consumption then the, the, the whole blunt, blunt will be on Nigeria. So a, a whole lot needs to do. For instance, there is also in the news that, that uh, Nigeria is even subsidizing for our neighboring countries. You know, I mean, that itself needs... Well, well there's no verification of that as concerning whether it's a fact or not. There's no evidence of that at the moment. So we won't want to go... I mean, what that, means, that, what that means is that we need to police our borders more. Okay. We need to police our borders more because, and then uh, the former uh, plan to provide some kind of transport palliatives okay. has to come back on board. I mean, because Nigerians would not cannot afford to uh, bear this burden, whereas a few marketers, few businessmen would continue to uh, leave, uh, leave the country dry. You know, so. That's, that's not how it should be. And you know, some, some people are already permutating that there's a whole lot of political uh, undertone on this issue, okay. which is very, very bad, because uh, we, we know that election is by the corner. And then uh, extending the subsidy regime for, an, uh, for 18, 18 months, months would ob obviously lead us to an election year. You know, so that's, that's one of the things uh, uh, labor and then the opposition party needs to come and uh, interrogate the more because 
uh, for me, I see that they will end up getting their way. They would boggle this money, and then collectively we would we would uh, feel the pain. And 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 if we don't pay it now, we will continue to pay. States will suffer because the the fiscal the fiscal arrangement would be reconfigured. You know, because now they would have more deficit. They would have to service debts and and all of that. Well, and so uh, it is not sustainable. So uh, a whole lot needs to, needs to be done in terms of the political will of the Na National Assembly to probe and interrogate this thing so that these figures can be brought back, brought down to a, a, a minimum. You okay. know? But it's, whether whether we like it or not, mm -hmm. subsidies, whether subsidies were moved or not, it would definitely have a huge impact on, on the economy. Okay, before I leave Financial that, impact. before I leave that completely, uh, it, you seem to have taken a very unpopular position concerning the removal of fuel subsidy and uh, the payment of the five thousand naira to about thirty million or forty million Nigerians, which was the first phase of the proposal that the government put forth to Nigerians and which has been severely criticized by lots of persons. Why would you want to go that route? Yeah, because I I I, I see that I see that uh, we are eating up our future. We're eating up our, the, 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 the earlier we, 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 we take all, the earlier we, we tell ourselves the truth, the better for us. Because now, for instance, if, if, the, if we had removed the, the subsidy, for instance, and then maybe jack the price to a little bit more, as say maybe 100% increase, and there is a palliative, it will help us. Now, look, looking, at, looking at each time, they bring they bring subsidy in our budget. Now we are talking about three trillion naira. If mm. we don't pay it today, our children, children, our generation will continue to pay it. You know, so for me, I don't I don't support the the, the subsidy regime because because it is it is just enriching a few set of persons All right. at the debt, at the detriment of the full country. All so right. now we, we are back to it again now, and we want to keep borrowing. And you know the implications of if you borrow, there will be inflation, there will be uh, the, 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 there will be scarcity of forest ex, uh, forest exchange, and the, the economy will suffer for it. All right, you know. So I I don't really I I think I think that we we can have a partial remover, you know, just the way we have the uh, the regulated LPG and uh, AGO. We can do same for PMS so that gradually, gradually, this phase would would decrease, uh, would fade away, and right. then uh, support refineries and uh, build more okay. refineries. Now, I make want to. I'm going in, to have the button here. Sorry, in, in Nigeria too. Yes, uh, whilst I want, whilst I'm trying to round up, you just mentioned I was about taking you to about to the refineries the four or five refineries in Nigeria, of which one is being controlled by the private sector and the others uh, being uh, in the hands of the government, as it was said. Now, about last week or two weeks ago, we heard that about $9.5 billion was expended into rehabilitation of the refineries for 10 years. Now, and uh, currently, as, 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 according to reports, the refineries are not performing optimally. Now, if the refineries are not performing optimally and we have the issue of fuel subsidy removal or not removal to contend with, what direction do you think the nation should go? I, I, I vehemently support uh, uh, the, the, the process of building refineries in Nigeria because uh, that itself is... is a, a, a great impact for the economy. I mean, Nigeria dwells so much on oil and the value chains that come from oil production. Uh, uh, so, wh why do we continue to uh, have these subsidy regimes when we can even within ourselves be more proactive and pragmatic enough? Okay. All yes, right. and and then I I, I want to see. I want to state that I don't I don't support NMPC participating in the process of uh, of our downstream sector because if they keep giving if they keep uh, turning around the, those uh, def those defunct or moral bond refineries, we okay. will keep paying for it. We we'll keep right. paying for it. So okay. they should they should consult with stakeholders like uh, investors. Give okay. them licenses. 
you know, they All right. scale them up. Let, we, we can have people have various class of refineries, modular refineries and, and the rest. Okay. So that Thank so that investors can come on board, give them licenses, stop them, watch them grow. Because going back to do turn around on all that that we have, it, it, it's not going to be very sustainable. So right. I, I want to see a situation whereby we would uh, be, um, uh, build new fresh refineries. It doesn't cost, what is, it didn't okay. cost that to pay up to, up to $700 million to build this phone. Right. So we, we need more players and, and uh, pragmatic uh, people so that we can earn dollars and we can create jobs for Nigeria. Okay. Thank you very yeah. much, Mr. Beka Nwatu, a public affairs analyst who joins us via phone call from Lagos. Thank you for your time this morning. Thank you.